in the prayer book, page 76, morning prayer 2. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Continuing on page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, lead you into eternal life. Amen. Continuing on page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Page 81, the Antiphon for Lent. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. And we will pray together the Venite on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the his are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. 
Our psalm appointed today from the Revised Common Lectionary is Psalm 130, found on page 784, page 784 in the Book of Common Prayer. That's Psalm 130 on page 784. We will pray together. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the spirit, out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I, will I, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Be to God. Our service continues on page 86. We'll pray together Canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah, on page 86. The bottom of page 86. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, 
nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also. Through his Spirit, that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle is on page 92, canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our gradual hymn is number 508, number 508, and will be led by the Bartolotta family.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, in the village of Mary and, his, and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, but rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just, trying to, just now trying to stone you. And you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that, he may die, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had already, already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that, what God, that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and he is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. <clears throat> so the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, 
Already there is a stench because he has been four, dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out with hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. I wanted to start with a letter that Father Jim Coral, who many of you know, posted on Facebook. This is a letter from F. Scott Fitzgerald, quarantined in 1920 during the Spanish flu epidemic. He's writing to, I presume, his sister named Rosemary. Dearest Rosemary, it was a limpid, dreary day, hung as in a basket from a single dull star. I thank you for your letter. Outside I perceive what may be a collection of falling leaves tussling against a trash can. It rings like jazz to my ears. The streets are that empty. It seems as though the bulk of the city has retreated to their quarters, rightfully so. At this time it seems very poignant to avoid all public spaces. Even the bars, as I told Hemingway, but he punched me in the stomach, to which I asked if he had washed his hands. He hadn't. <laughs> he is much the denier, that one. Why he considers the virus to be just influenza, I'm curious of his sources. The officials have alerted us to ensure we have a month's worth of necessities. Zelda and I have stopped up, stocked up on red wine, whiskey, rum, vermouth, absinthe, white wine, cherry, gin, and Lord, if we need it, brandy. Pray for us. We sh you should see the square. Oh, it is terrible. I weep for the damned eventualities this future brings. The long afternoons rolling forward slowly on the ever-so-slick bottomless highball. Z said it's no excuse to drink, but I can't seem to steady my hand. In the distance from my brooding perch, the shoreline is cloaked in a dull haze where I can discern an unremitting pennant that has been headed this way for a long, long time. And yet amongst the cracked cloud line of an evening's cast, I focus on a single strain of light, calling me forth to a better tomorrow. Faithfully yours, F. Scott Fitzgerald. I was consoled reading that letter because it made me think we had been here before. Well, we haven't, but other generations have. And we see in F. Scott Fitzgerald's response to the Spanish influenza of his day, which was not simply influenza, as Hemingway thought. The response of many of us, staying inside, hopefully not drinking all day, but being very careful and washing our hands and taking other precautions. Then, of course, there are some who, like Ernest Hemingway, deny that anything is going on and, well, this is simply past. And where that knowledge or that thought comes from, Lord knows. But to be honest, I find myself somewhere in the middle of all this. I have been thinking on this for a while. Someone asked me the other day, where have I seen God lately? And I thought, well, kind of the usual places. And I have not yet been able to see God in a virus, or in multiple deaths, or in panic, or in so much that's going on around us. I do believe that God is here, and God is in this, but I also don't want to whitewash the experience and simply wish it away as though it doesn't have with it an underside and a darkness and a threat that is not real. 
I think for those of us who are quarantining and hopefully not seeing much go on, not seeing many get sick or dying at this point, unless we turn on the news and look at New York City, we have been thus far somewhat shielded. But it doesn't do us any good to deny the reality also, not just of what's going on, but also the possibilities of what can go on, especially as more and more people get sick and perhaps more and more die. And it's with that kind of awareness that we encounter the scriptures today. This is a really strange encounter with Jesus. Jesus who goes to the tomb of his friend Lazarus but does not go right away. And he tells his disciples that Lazarus has fallen asleep and they mistakenly take him at that word. But what he really means to say is, no, he has died and I've gone to wake him. My teacher, uh, who taught me John's Gospel in the seminary, Frank Maloney, Father Frank Maloney, made the point that this Gospel, like the last two Sundays, are set up in a particular way in John's Gospel. Both the woman at the well, the man born blind, and the raising of Lazarus have the same pattern. They begin with an encounter where there is no faith. The woman at the well who does not understand who this Jesus is, the man born blind who is cured but he does not, does not yet understand or know who he's dealing with, and today the disciples who do not get it that Jesus is going to raise the dead. So you go from no faith to partial faith, and today we meet Martha and Mary. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would never have died. They know this Jesus is the prophet. They believe in him, but they do not yet totally understand him. They do not totally understand who he is and what his power is. And moving from partial faith to full faith happens when Lazarus is raised from the tomb and Jesus says, unbind him and let him go. And the Jews believed. In the same way, people came to believe after the man was thrown out of the synagogue who was born blind and expressed full faith in Jesus. And the people from the town in Samaria where the woman at the well had told them who Jesus was, and then they had an experience and came to a deeper understanding. These are some of the most ancient texts in our liturgy, and actually they were set probably the earliest, because the Lent was originally a time and a season that was meant specifically for those who would be baptized at Easter. And so these three Sundays, when we meet the woman at the well, the man born blind, and Lazarus in the tomb were meant to be times when those who were coming to faith could look at this pattern of wrestling with who Jesus is and come to a deeper experience of God. And I think that even those of us who are baptized and who have an experience of God, these stories can be instructive. Because we find ourselves in these uncertain, dark days, where some deny and some panic, and we find ourselves everywhere in between. And I think that if we really enter into the story and allow ourselves to be there, wondering, Lord, if you were here, this coronavirus wouldn't be among us. How on earth can God allow such things to happen? But as the, the Jewish theologian Abraham Joshua Heschel reminds us, we need to learn to think into the Bible, not tear it apart piece by piece just to prove things, which is how most of us approach our faith. Because from the very beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and created Adam and Eve and created a dynamic relationship. And in that relationship gave freedom and the relationship that we have with God is so essential that Heschel says that God is in search of us and 
we are the completion of that creation. And every act we do brings about redemption, brings about healing, brings about fullness. Of course, we know from the Genesis story that soon after Adam and Eve were created, their sons killed one another. And we know that from time and eternity, evil and darkness and violence enter our world. And that's also true of viruses and sickness. At the same time, we have a God that does not let us alone. Ezekiel reminds us that God can do all things, even raise dry bones, to become again people, the people of Israel redeemed. So I don't know where you find yourself. I have trouble saying that God is in this. I know God is here. But I don't want to push away the uncertainty and the difficulty. I don't want to rush to saying everything's okay because it's really not. At the same time, in the middle of my wondering, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Lord, if you were here, wouldn't things be different? I'm not losing hope. I think that's a faithful place to be. I think too quickly we shortcut. We go to the end. We try to find resolution when there's not the time for resolution. It's the time for faithfulness. It's the time to think in and through our actions, whether we're quarantined at home or whether we're still on the job as essential employees. It's the time to recognize that it's in and through the way we behave, in and through the way we believe, in, the way, in and through the way we treat one another. Perhaps the only others we have contact with are close families. Perhaps over the internet or the phone or perhaps those we care for in our hospitals and doctor's offices and the other places where we still go to work. God is there. I know that. And I also know that the end of this story is essential. Jesus says, Lazarus, come out, and then to the people around him, unbind him and let him go. It reminds us all that we are not to be chained, and regardless of anything that happens, blindness, uncertainty, death, there is no chaining the Spirit of God. Our service of morning prayer continues on page 96 with the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Continuing with suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely be fixed on the tr where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of your glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reach, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. There really aren't many announcements. I'd like to thank Matt Hudson for his being able to work the camera, and for my wife Erin for the music and the Bartolatas for, uh, I don't know how they're getting music to us, but they're doing it in some way, so good for them. And uh, we hope all of you are doing well and that you're checking in with one another and we'll be checking in with you. And if you need anything, please let us know. The prayers of the people are found on page 388. Page 388, will you be using Form four, page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth and as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to, the honor, to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. For Maggie, Melissa, Tammy, Christine, Jeffrey, Christy, Tiffany, Alexa, Jack, Carmen, Nancy, Heather, Chris, Maureen, Allison, Jimmy, Kathy, John, Mark, Bill, Hudson, Tommy, Janet, Kathy, Matthew, Bryn, Edith, Kathy, Ray, Edward, Hale, Jack, Griffin, Lucas and his family, John and are there others? <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. <clears throat> and we pray that we may share with you all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We will close with a prayer of St. Chrysostom, found on page 102 page 102 in your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 362.